Hi, uh, my name is Eric Jacobson and um, I am going to do a little bit of work on a painting here. Um, I have a painting behind me and I'm going to, I've got this painting I started outside and I'm going to work on it a little bit. So um, I'm going to go ahead and film this for you. I'm going to tell you real quickly what I'm thinking about here. I have this painting I started outside and uh, I've got it back here in the studio and it's it's been a few months since I've worked on it. But what I'd like to do is take the background hill that you can see there and I'd like to drop that into a little bit of a cooler tone, a little more blue in it, maybe a, maybe a little purple, you know, blue and red, but um, something to play off those trees. Right now it's it's kind of in a in a dark kind of brownish red color and it doesn't make the trees pop at all. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and work on and uh, I'm working in oils. And I'm going to see what happens with this. Right now I'm mixing up a color here that I think might help the painting. And anytime you go back into a painting and make a change like this, there's, um, you kind of have to start somewhere and kind of just go for it and, and see if the result is heading in the direction that you want it to or not. Uh, in my mind, I have an idea about again about trying to make these these warm trees reddish deep red orange color trees pop out more so um, so dropping a cooler value into those hills back there might i think is one way that i can do that and so we'll just see what happens the nice thing about this painting here, first of all, it's not a very big painting, so it's not super precious, but uh, it's all dry. So if I don't like the things that I work on, so I'm going to kind of blast at it here um, and try to stay real painterly. I'm not going to be real tentative like this, but I'm going to go in, you know, some big bold strokes. But if I don't like any of it, I can get rid of it. And I'll, and I'll end up with what I had, you know, to begin with, if I wipe all the wet paint down. Um, so that's one nice thing about going back and working into a painting that you've had hanging around for a while. It's dry. And for me, I found that it just takes a little while. There's no really easy way about it. It takes a little while to get back in the rhythm um, in the feeling of the painting. Notice I'm putting on, you know, pieces of paint is what I like to call them, just, just brush strokes. Um, and I'm trying to keep the feeling that I had originally, uh, which was a very direct, bold, painterly approach. Because I'm repainting, I have a lot of different options, um, but I like I like to, in my mind, think about it as really just a couple of options um, that, are, that that I'm really thinking mostly about, and that is I'm thinking about the color, you know, the color change. But I'm thinking when I think of the color, I'm thinking warm or cool, you know, warm and cool color, and I'm also thinking value. So um, I'm following the value 
scheme that was laid out here where it had this dark value down here. Um, and so I'm, while I'm changing the color here, going a little more purple, I, I'm trying to keep my value darker in this part of the painting as opposed to back here. So those hills will look like, you know, these are the, the trees maybe or the dark areas that are up closer to the viewer and then it kind of goes back. Now, as soon as I go ahead and change that, I notice that I'd like to do something with that sky as well. And uh, I think what I'd like to do is warm the sky up just a little bit more than it is, a little more yellow. Right now, it's a very muted kind of um, purpley, a lot of reds in it. Um, but very, very grayed down, not a very strong color, a color that would be hard to identify if you were, weren't an artist. You'd say, well, what color is that? I don't know. It looks gray. Uh, it's kind of an opalescent color where it's, it kind of looks warm here and cool there and kind of bluish here, a little bit more toward yellow and green here. But I think I'm going to lighten it up just a little and see what happens, see if that helps the painting. So I'm removed from the scene now. So... All I'm trying to do is make something that feels like it works here, that's something that's believable. Um, I'm not copying from a photo. I don't have a photo reference at this spot. I've just mixed up a little light and a little bit of uh, cadmium lemon yellow. And you can see that changes the painting quite a bit, just the adding of that lighter value. And I, I think that might not be a bad idea to have something that light in the sky. I don't think I'll cover the whole sky with that same light value. I think I'll uh, drop the value down just a little bit um, here and there. Adding a little bit of blue to, to make a green color here. Really, really kind of paled out green. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but you know, the nice thing is if I think in terms of harmony, if I consider this to be a red orange, then green is the complement to the red and purple is the complement to the orange part. So um, I'm, I'm thinking about those things as I decide what colors I want to try up here. Again, I'm changing, changing the painting quite a bit. And uh, I should say, I often do this um, in the studio and sometimes um, the paintings work out better and sometimes, sometimes I'm still not real happy with them and, um, and they don't, you know, they don't become a painting that I'll exhibit or you know show anywhere but um, but that's okay too part of this is um, learning to be bold and to go after something this painting's been sitting around for a while and I noticed it just looked kind of dull to my eye there's nothing really grabbing my attention from across the room when I would look at it I liked some of the uh, mark making but overall it, it didn't it, it didn't have a a value scheme or in, in a temperature um, scheme that really worked for me. So let's try that. So if you're watching this, you're probably aware that I'll be teaching at um, Penn Studios and I'm looking forward to that and in fact that's why I'm doing this little demo so that if someone might be interested in taking a workshop you can get a little bit of a window into my approach 
my painting approach and some of the things that I think about when I'm painting. So you can see I'm lightening that down just a little bit more. I'm going to push that back. Um, make that into a hill that's a little bit further away is, is the idea. So what often happens for me, if I'm going to go and rework a painting, a lot of times I'm thinking about one aspect of it to begin with. And I mentioned what that was, that I wanted to get something cool behind here. But that means I have to usually go in and paint, repaint the whole painting. Um, and so that's what I'm doing here. I'm going ahead and laying paint down, as you can see, and covering over areas that I have already painted, obviously, because the painting was complete in the sense that I had covered the whole board here. But now I'm going ahead and, and changing some things, so. I don't like how hard that edge is back there. And so I'm gonna take this little squeegee, little squeegee tool, and uh, I'm just gonna soften that so it goes back into space. The whole idea, of course, is that hard edges tend to be, you know, they come forward and whenever you soften an edge, it'll tend to, you know, go into the distance or at least take your eye away from a certain area. So now we have harder edges up around here and softer edges here. So they're not competing. They're not the same. We have a variety going on. In case you're wondering, I'm using a number six, Robert Simmons flat uh, hog bristle brush. I tend to like to use rather large brushes, um, but with this, I thought I didn't want to blast in with a giant brush. You know, I didn't want to go in with, let's see what I have here. Here's a number 12 uh, hog bristle flat. I thought that was a little big. From what I was thinking, I'm kind of delicately poking around here. But I generally use flats and rounds, hog bristle. I thought this, this light here looks a little too light. It, it may be that I'll build back up again and, and lighten that. But there's a lot of back and forth going on here. And which isn't a bad way to work, by the way. Um, if you're kind of working in and back and forth and over things. If, you're, if you do it carefully, and if you're laying paint down on top, and you're not always scumbling everything, you can stay rather clean with it, and you can get the paint to kind of, um, what I like to think is it, it kind of knits together. That's, that's what I'm thinking, the brushwork knits together. I've got brush strokes going this way, and this way, and this way, this way, this way, this way. You know, so I'm, I'm doing that deliberately, because it's something that I like to see in a painting. And 
And what, what I've got over here, you can see my brush tap in here. That's, this is just a, a little tray that has uh, odorless mineral spirits in it. And what I'm using for my medium, in case you want to know, is liquin. 